Hello and welcome. I'm Jacqueline Battle, and recently we've been talking about how to overcome blood magic. We've been talking about the different components that are involved with this type of mechanism and spell casting and incantations. Uh, we've broken down some ways that this type of force is applied to one's life. Why are we talking about it? Because at the beginning of the year, I had a situation that I was involved in and it evolved my health. And I heard a prophecy that came from my nephew, Christopher Battle. And as um, I began to process that prophecy and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, that particular night that I went to sleep, the Spirit of God began to minister to me with understanding. He gave me a solution as to the issue that was attacking my health and how to pray. He revealed to me some things that were going on that involved blood magic and how I needed to pray to fortify my own blood and how to come against certain things that have been applied in the area of divination as it pertained to my health. Needless to say, immediately when I began to pray in the way that God had instructed, I could see immediate resolution. And this is why I want to minister to this, um, because there are people who are involved in certain things in life and, and they're not understanding that they're under attack and they're they're involved in certain things and, and trying to move forward. And there are some things that are hindering them. And so because God revealed this to me, I knew that I needed to go forth and do more research and hear more from him and gain more understanding from him and open my eyes to see how certain things had been operating all along. And I wasn't aware of this type of divination that was taking place in my own life. And as that began to happen, I, I felt moved by the spirit of God and enlightened by the spirit of God. And I needed to share that with others. So here we are. We've been talking about how to overcome blood magic, identifying it, identifying how certain things operate, just enough for people to be able to go and study, break on the, open the word, begin to pray and fast and ask God to give them revelation as to their own lives and the lives of their loved ones. And so in this particular study that we have been embarking upon, what God revealed to me recently is that there is a microscopic residue that abides after demons have been cast out. After you've prayed over circumstances and situations, after you've bind up and you've cast out and demons um, have been removed, there's a microscopic residue that remains. And there's a sermon that I preach on my YouTube channel and it's called Weapons That Overcome the Microscopic Residue of Jezebel. This sermon came about because my daughter-in-law, who overcame uh, lymphoma, cancer, had to undergo radiation. And we asked, why was the radiation necessary if the tumors had been removed and she was showing cancer free? And the radiologist explained or the doctor explained that it was necessary for her to have the radiation treatment because after the removal of certain cancers, there is a microscopic residue. Well, in the word of God, we're told in the book of first Kings chapter nine of how Jezebel was destroyed thrown out of a window and her innards were splattered on the ground. And yet there were certain parts of her that remained. And that's what brought about that sermon weapons to overcome the microscopic residue of Jezebel. Well, when we talk about coming against or overcoming the effects of blood magic in our lives and how God can lead and guide and direct us, if we're open to hear, um, he will direct us as to how we need to pray against these forces. Well, what we have to understand is there is residue that's in our lives and we need to be prepared before we attempt to come against any type of dark force. We need to be prepared to overcome any residue of sin in our lives. And so tonight, what we're going to talk about, though we've been talking all along about blood magic and how to overcome it, how to recognize it, um, how to pray, all of these things are very important. All these mechanisms are important. But tonight we're going to talk about how to prepare ourselves for the battle. I'm Jacqueline Badlin. I'm inviting you. Stay with me.
Hey, welcome back. So as we talk further about being prepared, because I, I, what I'm finding is that there are those of us and we are, we're, we're going in, you know, fools kind of rush in in areas where angels fear to tread. Um, we rush into areas and we're not prepared and we expect to see a certain type of result. And when we don't see that result, yeah. We become extremely disappointed. So tonight we want to talk about being prepared. You know, when you go into anything and you're not prepared, there are some things that will blindside you. And it'll happen because you didn't know that those things existed. And a lot of times we're not aware because we don't we don't wait to hear what the spirit has to say. Um, I did a series called Wait on the Lord. And in that, it didn't mean wait until the Lord shows up. Um, what we meant by wait on the Lord is that because he's already gone before us, he's already prepared the way to receive us. We need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. He knows the way. And so we need to hear from him and allow him the opportunity to direct our path. So again, why are we talking about blood magic? Well, firstly, the word of God tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verses 8 through 9, that there are witnesses There are testimonies to the evidence of God's greatness, of God's glory in this earth. You know, in the heavens, uh, there are three that bear witness and they agree because they are one. That's the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. But here in the earth, there are three that bear witness as one. Uh, and, and, And these witnesses give evidence as to the credence, the glory of God. And you can use these witnesses when you don't have anybody to bear witness with you in the earth. Maybe everybody's not, everybody's in unbelief. And you may be the only one that's believing for your wholeness, that's believing for your deliverance, that's believing for your advancement. And so when that's the case, the word says, when two or three shall agree on earth, as in touching, that's in Matthew 18 chapter, excuse me, chapter 18, verses 18 through 20. When two shall agree on earth as in touching anything they shall act shall be done for them by the father, which is in heaven. That agreement is one mind. Well, when you don't have a person that can bear witness with you, you can use the spirit of God. You can use the blood of Jesus. You could even use water. That's why people are baptized. Yeah, they're baptized to openly confess uh, their decision to make Jesus their Lord and Savior, but also that water bears a record. Being a witness means bearing a record in the heavens, in the earth, the past, the present, the future, in the blood course of heaven. You have a witness that will stand with you. And as you stand on the word of God, you have a witness that will testify as to the credence, the glory of God. And so that's why we've been talking about these things so that people understand First, firstly, what blood magic is, those that practice this type of divination, this type of sorcery, witchcraft, seduction, and so on and so forth. But also to understand that we can overcome, to understand that there are prayers that can be prayed. But before we do any of that, the Spirit of God said to me, pump your brakes. Pump your brakes because there are some people that are going to begin to try to come against these forces and they are not prepared. So tonight we're going to pause for the cause and we're going to talk about how to be prepared to overcome. And so what we're talking about is some residue that may be in us that's hindering us. Father God, we want to thank you so much that Jesus Christ is Lord. Heavenly Father, we we thank you for for the anointing that you placed on the life of Jehu, which was a judge. And now we ask God to give us that type of anointing. The anointing that we need, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that will help us to overcome certain propensities that have hindered us from being all of your imagery that you would have us to be ask that you would place us in the necessary position to posture and the location to receive the type of anointing given to Jehu or even greater to destroy the house of uh, Ahab and the works of Jezebel. So as we talk about these things, we want to understand tonight that after demons, as I mentioned earlier, are cast out, there's still a residue. And so maintenance is important. Maintenance is important to not just um, walk in the way that we need to walk after deliverance, but also to continue to clean, to, to remove certain certain debris that's still 
that's still looking to form something else and, and to stem into something else even greater than what was there before. The word of God says, go and sin no more. Let's the greater thing come upon you. That's that residue that you've got to make sure that you continue to move out of your life. And so when we look at the story of Jezebel, then we understand that Jezebel is an eavesdropping spirit. You see, that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about blood magic, we're talking about forces that get sent forth, even in the form of astral projection. And they go forth and they spy. You got monitors that spy. You've got street corner monitors that will that that, that will spy for the enemy, for the demonic forces. Uh, they know how you pray. Uh -huh. They know when you fast. They know what's going on. They know your practices. That's why when the Spirit of God tells you to do something, He may tell you to change it up. You need to hearken instantly to the voice of God because that Jezebel spirit is an eavesdropping spirit. It's not male or female. So Jezebel heard Jehu coming. But right now in the name of Jesus, we exalt the name and the authority and the power of Jesus Christ far above every principality and power. We exalt the name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus right now over the name of and any authority of the Jezebel spirit. So the, the name Jezebel derives from a Hebrew word that means not exalted. Jezebel is assigned against real prophets. Jezebel has a problem. The spirit of Jezebel has a problem with true prophets. And because that spirit is not exalted, it has an inferiority complex. And whenever there's a true prophet, the false prophets will begin to, to, to be used by Jezebel to come against the true prophecy, to hinder the word of the Lord. Jehu means he is God. Jehu is an ordained and anointed to destroy Jezebel. So just like Jezebel is a spirit, an eavesdropping spirit, a spirit that's sent to infiltrate and to hinder the, the work of the true prophet. Jehu is a spirit that's been ordained to overcome the Jezebel spirit. Why are we talking about this? In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 9, verses 1 through 37, and we're not going to get a chance to read all of that, but we understand from reading it that we're talking about territorial warfare among the spiritual forces. And so it was the house of Ahab where this territorial warfare headquartered. And so Ahab was the demonic covering for that spirit of Jezebel to abide. Well, when we read in 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 1 through 37, if we start there at, at um, verse 32, what we see is that there was after Jezebel was pushed out of that window, there was a residue that was left. The rest of her was destroyed, but her skull, her hand, and her feet, and the blood of Jezebel that was splattered against the wall remained. And we know that blood has a life. We've talked about it. The life of the flesh is in the blood. That's why we're not to ingest blood. Because there's a force there. And that force can carry all kinds of personalities and, char and characters and powers and energies, propensities, and purposes. And so all of Jezebel was destroyed, but the residue was her skull, mind, mindset, hands, that's the work, and the feet to travel and to maneuver and to navigate and to move in and out to try to hinder and the blood of Jezebel that was splattered upon the wall to try to leave a life of her behind. And so, when you're dealing with residue, the face of the force that you're dealing with is hidden. So when you're trying to prepare yourself to overcome a dark force, you've got to make sure that there's no hidden residue in you. You know, when Jesus was here, he said, you know, I'm getting ready to go, but I can tell you right now, the enemy can't find anything in me. There's nothing like him in me. 
there's no residue that this force can use to produce. So we're searching. We're preparing ourselves by searching, not by our own mighty power, but by the spirit of the living God to see if there's any residue in us, to pray it out, to fast it out, to test it out, to stand against it, not in our own mighty power, but this life that we live in the flesh, we're going to live it by the faith of the Son of God. So through the faith of the Son of God, we're trusting that the authority that we've been given to walk in the power of God's Holy Spirit will direct us and remove the blindness from our eyes so we can see if there's any residue in us. David says, search me, O Lord. See, the Spirit of God, the candlelight will begin to shine and reveal to us where there's residue that we need to pray over, that we need to fast over, that we need to cast out of ourselves and pray for the strength to stand above. As we're looking in this chapter, chapter uh, 2 Kings, I'm sorry, 2 Kings chapter 9, Looking at verse 32, this is Jehu. He looked up in the window and he called out, who is on my side? Who is on my side? Who is on my side? Well, we know in Psalms 118.6, it tells us the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? That's your first thought. You need to confess any fear that you have in your heart, your mind, and your soul. Because God's not giving you the spirit of fear. Fear has torment. He's giving you power, love, and sound mind. So you've got to confess any fear that you may have. Even in studying this thing. Even in understanding this type of magic that we've been talking about. These spells and incantations that's being used through the power of blood magic. You want to confess any fear that you may have. The word of God says when you go to war, if you've got a soldier that's fearful, you need to send him home. Or he'll infect the entire army with that spirit of fear. So firstly, you want to confess any fear that you may have. And ask God to empower and strengthen and fortify the spirit of power, love, and sound mind that he's given to you. And then you've got to bind up the spirit of fear in yourself. You've got to command the spirit of fear to get up and out and go be cast into the depths of the sea. You've got to ask that spirit of power, love, and sound mind that God has given unto us to increase and fortify in you. Fortify you over the spirit of fear. You got to start talking to yourself. There's some work you're going to have to do before you just jump in to come against certain forces. You need to be prepared. So Jehu says, who is on my side? And then two or three units look down at him. And in verse 33, he looked up at them and he said, throw her down. That's what you've got to do. You've got to begin to throw down the residue that's in you that you've not confessed unconfessed sin in your heart. You've got to begin to cast it down. Throw it down because it will hinder you from operating in the capacity that you have been called to operate. The devil, the enemy, will use the unconfessed confessed sins. But the word says if you confess your sins, he's faithful to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness so you can stand before your enemy in the righteousness of God that you are in Christ that you have received by faith and not just any faith but the faith of the Son of God that you walk in in this life that you live in the flesh. So you've got to throw down all of these forces that are within you, propensities that are there, unconfessed sin that's in your life. You know you're jealous. You know you've got some unforgiveness. And you just can't seem to fix it. So you won't confess it because you don't see a way to fix it. But God can fix it. You just got to confess it. There's some other things that you got going on. You got to confess it. Lord, I'm confess. I don't know why I'm trying to hide this from you. I don't know why I'm trying to make it excuse. I got to confess. This is an issue for me. It is really an issue. And while I try to act like I can fix it or I try to swallow it, I can't. Throw, throw Jezebel down. Begin to confess any sins that you've not confessed. If the Spirit of God brings it to your mind, you may think, well, I've already confessed it. But if the Spirit of God brings it to your mind, confess it. Because it may be some type of new um, resolution that has taken place. 
some that type of new transformation that's formed from what you were thinking in the past that you've confessed. It may have transformed or transmuted into something else. Confess it if the Spirit of God brings it to your heart. Because what you're doing is you're throwing down, Jezebel. You're cleaning up and casting out and washing out and sucking out the rest of that residue that was left. From after you accepted Christ as Savior, after you casted out certain demons, after you overcame certain things, after you were delivered from certain things, there's still unconfessed sin. There's some residue up in there that didn't get destroyed when everything else was destroyed. Throw it down. Jehu said, so, and after he said that to them, throw her down, they threw her down. And some of her blood splattered on the wall. And on the horses as they trampled her under foot. Jehu went after that. And he was able to eat and drink and got a, he had taken care of, of the cursed woman. And so after that, he went on about his life. And so they went down to try to bury her, but they didn't find anything but her skull. Remember that mindset? Her feet and her hands. So you would think that it's a done deal, but that's residue. That's residue that can be used. The mindset, the skull, the hands, uh huh, the works against the true prophets, the feet that can travel and navigate, send monitors and demonic forces ahead. That all has to be destroyed. True, they say it was nothing left to be buried, but there was residue there. Don't forget the residue. When you get delivered, Remember, there's still residue. When demons are cast out, there's still residue. You need to understand how to pray over the residue. How to confess any sins that are there. So that you can walk in the righteousness of God. Without fear. Without condemnation that's deeply abiding in your subconscious. And you may not even be aware that it's there. When you go into coming against dark forces... Cast out the spirit of fear because God's not giving you the spirit of fear. He's giving you power, love, and sound mind. Call on the spirit of power, love, and sound mind that's in you. God, we acknowledge your presence right now. We acknowledge your presence and we thank you, Father, that your word tells us that you dwell in us by your spirit. You're not just with us, you are in us. And right now we acknowledge your presence in us. And we thank you, God, that you said that if we acknowledge you in all of our ways, that you would direct our path. So as we acknowledge your presence in us, we say thank you for the life of God that dwells in us. And now we ask for your direction. Lord God, Jehovah, everybody's case is different. And yet you know each and every one by name. You know the particulars. You know about things in their bloodline that they don't know anything about. And that blood is speaking. And in some cases, it's speaking against them. And in some cases, it's trying to speak for them. But their their behavior is hindering their blood from speaking good things for them. There's a residue in their heart that they hadn't overcome yet. That they're not aware of it. The skull, the hands, the feet, the blood splattered on the wall is still trying to operate. Try, still trying to get a foothold. But God. Tonight we're calling on you and acknowledging your presence with us and in each and every one of us. Direct our path, oh God, in this thing as we seek to overcome, to cast out, to prepare for deliverance. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. So as we get ready to close out, I want us to remember that two important Revelations are important for each of us. We want to understand how to operate when we're talking about casting out and overcoming. And one of the things that we want to understand is power and authority. So power is the Greek word dunamis. Authority is the Greek word azusia. When we're talking about looking at these words in the New Testament. So authority is the legal right to use power. And we've been given authority to use the power supplied by God's Holy Spirit. And just then when I prayed, I was calling on the power of God's Holy Spirit to lead God and direct us. It's very important that we understand 
that God has given us his Holy Spirit in abundance. And through his spirit, we have authority. And through his spirit, we have power. And the spirit of God can get things done for us beyond what we could possibly think or ask. But we want to remember that as we're being delivered, there's microscopic residue that also needs to be removed. And there's a maintenance that we have to establish for ourselves. Just because you walk away delivered or somebody else walks away delivered after you've cast out certain forms of, of forces, and blood magic, because that's what we've been talking about. Remember, there's an enemy lying and waiting. He left something there that's a residue and it's your job to maintain your relationship with the Father, to meditate on his word day and night, observe it to do all according to that is written therein. It's your job to continue to hear what the Spirit is saying and to hearken instantly. It's your job to confess any unconfessed sins so that we can't give place to the enemy. He won't be able to try to overtake our righteousness. So we want to make sure that our sins are forgiven when we engage with the enemy. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness that's found in 1 John 1, 9. I mentioned that a moment ago. So we don't want to engage in battle with the enemy or demonic dark forces until we have remembered and placed ourselves in a mindset that delivers our subconscious mind from condemnation. And we do that by confessing any un confessed sins by reminding ourselves that we stand in the righteousness of God by faith and the righteousness that we have is in Christ Jesus we live and breathe and have our being through Christ Christ is in us the hope of glory and we're in him seated in heavenly places and when we operate we operate through Christ's righteousness not through our own not through our own pride not through our own accomplishments we walk in humility and we operate in the righteousness of God. And through his righteousness, the spirit of God can lead God and direct and overcome and defeat the enemy and help us cleanse from any microscopic residue that may still be abiding even after we've been delivered. All of this prepares us to overcome the effects of blood magic. And I keep talking about that because that's what we're discussing now. And then, you know, we'll move on to, to other things. But I'm discussing this because I realized when it touched me that this enemy had been lying and waiting, moving about in a way that I would have never have imagined, but God revealed it to me. And then begin to tell me how to pray against this thing. How to pray for my own blood. My own blood. The life of my flesh. How to begin to pray on behalf of others. And how to cast this thing out. And now he's saying to us that we need to prepare. Before we just move in to try to overcome an enemy. We need to be prepared. In our own selves. In our own consciousness. We are made righteous and we have to receive that righteousness of Christ by faith. As I get ready to close out, as I mentioned earlier, we want to understand that the righteousness is not ours. But once we understand that we're walking in Christ's righteousness, it gives us a boldness. A boldness to now go before the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find the grace that we need to overcome any demon that's attempted to come against us. Righteousness is like a scepter in the kingdom of God. Hebrews 1.8 tells us that. Righteousness is, is, is a boldness that we have. According to Psalms 28.1, it makes you bold. It empowers that person with a spirit of boldness. Because you're walking not in your own righteousness, but in the righteousness of God. God covers our head in the day of battle. According to Psalms 140 verse 7. A covering is like a protection. A covering is, is based on subjection to God. His word and his Holy Spirit. Humility and submission are important characteristics of believers to engage in spiritual warfare. 
So as I close out, I want you to understand that there's no reason to be fearful. But you do want to prepare yourself as we continue to talk about hematomancy and other forms of, of blood magic and what's happening and what people are doing and, and, and why it's more prevalent now than ever so that we're not being seduced so that we're not inviting an enemy and we don't even understand what we've ingested and now this enemy forming something working in a way that's beyond what we could have thought or asked I hope this has been helpful to someone and I'm praying for you that you understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ and that he has prepared us with instruments that we can use to overcome the enemy. Well, I'm Jacqueline Battle. I want to thank you again for joining me here. See, it's my heart's desire to equip the kingdom of God. And there's so many, so many weapons that we've been given, spiritual weapons, and there's so many of us in the ministry that have experienced the glory of God. The glory of God is the manifestation of God's word moving in this physical realm. So as we experience encounters with God and he gives us revelation as to how we need to share that to help other people. There are those of us like me that desire to share what God has done in my life how he's helped me to overcome. Now, I'm not going to sit here and give you all the details. I give you enough so you can go to the Father and pray. But I want you to understand that there may be something that you're encountering in your life now, and it could have something to do with spell casting. It could have something to do with divination. It could have something to do with blood magic. And the one you need to ask is the spirit of the living God that's dwelling in you. God is in you. He's dwelling in you by his spirit and you can talk to him and listen and he will speak back. Matter of fact, he's already talking to you. Before you call, he's already answered. While you're speaking, he hears. You got to talk to the spirit of God that's within you. God is in you. Yes, he is everywhere, but he's in you. And he's with you. And with God, according to Luke 1, nothing shall be impossible. Well, I'm Jacqueline Battle, and I want to tell you, thank you again for joining us. I want to remind you that God loves you, and I'm praying for you. Blessings.